Okay, today I want to talk about the URL object and the search params object. Now, when most web developers start out, they're learning HTML, they're learning about the href attribute, the source attribute for anchors and images like we have here. And you tend to think about these two things as just a string. So it's a string and there's different parts to it. There's the protocol, there's the domain name or the host name here. We've got from this point on, here's the path to my um, file and then here's the actual file name itself. Then we've got a query string. So starting after the file name, there's a question mark and then we've got a bunch of name value pairs here. The value equals, or sorry, the name equals value ampersand, name equals value, ampersand, name equals value. And then at the very end, we've got this hash value. And that starts with this thing right here, the hashtag, and then whatever we want to put inside of here. So this can be used, usually is used as a target for an ID somewhere on a web page, but it can be used just to store other information as well. But the point of this is that we tend to think of these things just as strings. Now, a few years ago, they added, as they were updating the APIs for HTML5 and creating the fetch API, they realized, you know what, it'd be much easier if we didn't have to take this thing as a string and write the code ourselves to say, all right, find all these forward slashes, cut it up, find the question mark, find all the different pieces of this URL and split it up and save them into different properties and then let me do the comparing. So they created a URL object that allowed us to do this. Pretty simple to work with. Here in my DOM content loaded, I'm going to target this anchor tag and this image tag. So the anchor tag has the ID link. I'm finding that. And then inside the anchor, I'm looking for an image tag. There's my two references. And then I get those two properties. So I'm grabbing the source. Now the source of the image, you'll notice it starts with a period and then a forward slash. That means it's looking in the same folder as the HTML for this JPEG file. That file isn't going to be the full URL. The browser looks at that and says, okay, if you're saying it's in the same folder as the HTML file, that means the protocol and the domain and the port number and the path, all those other pieces are going to be the exact same as the HTML file. So whatever those values were for the HTML file, they're going to be appended to the front of this or prefixed onto that file name. So if we look at these two values and we open this up in the browser, here we go, we can see that the type of each one, that's what my console logs are doing here. I'm writing out what is the type of a href and what is the type of image href. Both those are going to be strings because that's what those values are. And that's how we used to view them as just as strings or when we start out, that's how we view them. But we're going to take these and put them into an object. And the object is going to do all the work of cutting apart the string and figuring out which piece represents which part of the href. So for my, let's do the image one first. There we go. So I'm going to take the image href, that's the source right here, and I'm going to pass it as a string to a URL object. I'm going to create a URL object, and then I'm going to write out that object. Here we are. This is the object. It's a URL object, and you can see it has all of these properties inside of it. So we've got a hash value. Well, this didn't have a hash value. There's no hashtag with a value after it. So that's just an empty string. The host name and host, these two things are the same, except if there is a port number specified, like we have right here, there is a port number 5500. That gets added on for host. The origin is the same as the host, but it gets the protocol added on the front. So there's a protocol property here, the HTTP, that gets added on with the two forward slashes, added on to the host, and that becomes the origin. href. This is the full string. It's everything that we had up here. If you ever want the full string, you can use either the href property or there is a two string method that you can call and you will get the exact same value as the href. Path name, well, there wasn't any folders or anything. That was right at the root. So that's what we have here. At the root is just this file name. Port, 
right here, 5500. If we didn't specify one, this would be an empty string as well. Password and username, those are empty strings because we don't have that specified. Search is the query string. This is the term for the query string. And then search params, that is another kind of object, a URL search params object. It has a whole bunch of cool methods inside of it. So you can treat it almost like an array. We can call a for each method to loop through each one of the values and get the keys and the values for everything that's inside of there. All right, so let's take a look at the, the other one here. I'm going to comment this one out. And we'll look at the anchor one instead. That's the one that has this big long path with all the different parts to it. Um, I have down here at the bottom, inside the description for this video, you'll find a link to the code gist that has this file. Um, and so you'll have this reference with all of the different parts that I'm talking about here. Okay, so this is the list of all the values for the anchor tag. This anchor tag that we click on down here. There's the hash value, starts with the hashtag, and we've got that big part. Um, search, there's the full search string right there. So you can start with the question mark. The question mark is always included. And then we've got three name value pairs. There's an ampersand between each one, and we've got the name and the value, name equals value, name equals value. Again, we're back to that same thing where, okay, yeah, I've got the query string, but it's just a string. I would like to get at those different parts. And that's what the search params object is going to let us do. So let's actually do something with that. We have this a URL object that is going to have a search params property. And this is the thing with all the methods. So I can say for each, I'm going to do a for each loop through every one of the name value pairs. So it will call the function that we put inside of here for each one of the pairs. There's going to be a value, that's the item, and then the key or name, whatever you want to call it. You can say name, you can say key, either way. It doesn't really matter what you use as the name of the variable, but inside of here, I'm going to write out that there's the name. Sorry, that's a variable the name and then just put a couple of colons between it as a separator and the value. All right, so save that, come back in here, of course console is not a function, but console.log is, there we go, there we are. So here's the three times it looped, line 41, all three of them, that's the name. That's the value. That's the name. That's the value. That's the name. That's the value. So we have all of them. Or if we want, we can get to individual ones. Let's say I only wanted to know what this IKW sec one was. Well, inside of here, we can see get. There is a get method. I can pass in this IKW sec or IKW ID, and that's going to get me the value JavaScript. Let's try that one. A URL search params dot get. And then what is the name that we want to use? Well, it was IKW ID. Just double check that. IKW ID, yes. All right. And then we can write that out. And there we are. JavaScript. So that's the value. So you can see, if you know what these values are ahead of time, what the names for each one of the properties inside the query string, if you know what they are, it makes this much easier to get at. Instead of having to split the string, take it, split it on all the equal signs, loop through each of those, and split them again on the equal sign after you've split them on the ampersand. This is much less work. It's much easier, much easier to read your code. So I would encourage you to as soon as possible, start working with the URL object and the search params object instead of just working with the string and then going through all the work yourself of splitting it apart. All right, so hope that helps you out. Hope that makes you a little bit more efficient with your coding. 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I will answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.